now we will, uh, we will read Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Eliana is already here. Is there anybody else? Good morning, Sam, Yemi, Mario. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Good. I'm glad to hear it. Um, I thought to tell you a story. We just listened to a a list of people who are blessed and it's a surprising list and so the story i want to to tell you is one where um where i knew myself blessed life wasn't easy but i knew myself blessed when i um was pregnant with my first son i only have one son but my first child uh it wasn't very long into my pregnancy. How long are you pregnant? How long does normally? How many? Nine months. Nine months. Yeah, good. So early on, um, I noticed a like a rash on my leg, and it it looked like a bullseye. Have you ever seen one of those? You know what that kind of you know what that means? Yeah, like the target. Like the target. Do you know what it means? It means Lyme's disease, which is means I got bit by a tick. Um, of a deer, uh, from, from a deer, and I, I live in deer country, and I, I'm blaming it on my cat. I think my cat brought it in the house, and I got it from her. But anyway, but because I was pregnant, it made me really nervous to be having Lyme disease at the same time, right? So I went to the doctor, and I showed the doctor the rash, and, he, and I said, please tell me it's not Lyme disease, and he laughed. He's like, <laughs> He gets ramen, that's classic. It couldn't get any more classic than that. That's exactly what Lyme disease looks like. And he said, don't worry about it. Two weeks, two, three weeks, I don't remember, on an antibiotic medicine, and you'll be fine. And I'm like, and is the baby going to be fine? The baby's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. But I did worry. But I did worry for a long time. For weeks, I worried. And I remember, I can remember the moment. I was in my, I was in my house, and I had the house to myself, And it was like, you know, like when you're like, you don't want to deal with something and you just, you, you, you know, you're not going to think about it. And then finally it was like in my face. And I thought, you're going to love this because I'm a pastor, right? I thought, maybe I should pray. <laughs> right? And so I decided to pray and I just let loose with God, really, really honest. And I... You know, it's hard not to be honest with God because God can see through all of our, you know, I think we, we can lie to ourselves, but, you know, but God sees through all of it, right? And I just, I just owned up to being, you know, being nervous, being a first-time mom, and I'm the baby of my family, right? So I never had really had to, you know, uh, to take care of other little kids. Your oldest child, baby, oldest, oldest child, youngest child, Right? So I was the youngest child, 
right? So there was no little kid, there was nobody that I had to worry, you know, so I was a little nervous about, I was a little nervous about my maternal instinct, right? I was a little nervous about being a mom in the first place. And then I, then I was really nervous that, you know, what, what if, you know, the, you know, the, the Lyme disease gets the baby sick and then what is that going to mean? And I was just this bundle of nerves and worry and I let it all loose before God. And then I heard in, it occurred to me, these words came into my head, I will be with you. And then I was okay. And then I could let the rest of the pregnancy just be, I was okay. Because I knew that no matter what happened, that God was going to see me through. And I believed it. Now, did God say to me, don't worry about it, everything's going to be fine? No. Did God say, don't, you know, because you have faith in me, life is going to be easy? Nope. What God promised was, I will be with you no matter what. That is God's promise to us. Life isn't easy for anybody. There's always stuff that's going to come up that is really tough. Um, and, you know, but the God's promise to us is, I will see you through. I will walk with you. I will be with you in it. And it's better. And it's better when we walk in that confidence. Does that make sense? Right? Say that again? Kinda. Kinda. As you grow up, when you get to those to those tough times, you know, because tough stuff happens to everybody. <laughs> Wisdom. And you're gonna do this anyway. You can just like push it down, push it, push it, push it down. Remember to pray. Bring it to God and then let God reassure you. I'll be with you. We got this together. Okay, makes sense? And the beauty of being part of a church is that when we talk about this stuff with other people, we, found out, we find out that other people have been there, that they understand, and they walk with us through it as well, which is another beautiful thing. Right? Let's fold our hands, close our eyes, bow our heads. Uh, dear God, thank you for that promise to be with us through anything, no matter what. We know ourselves blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Our second scripture passage comes from Micah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth, For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you, and what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt, and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Renita Weems is the first African-American woman to earn a PhD in Old Testament 
and is somebody that I follow on social media. And she posted yesterday that she could not bring herself to watch the video of the beating of Tyre Nichols. But she lifted up a prayer for all the preachers who would stand up in the pulpit, especially in Memphis, and all the people who were pushing through their trauma to reach the altar. His name was Tyron Nichols. He is dead and we, can, we all continue to be traumatized by senseless death. I'm very grateful to Victor Peterson who filled in last week preaching for me. Uh, Victor, if you don't know, is the therapist, Methodist pastor who uh, meets clients here at, in the church's building, which is wonderful uh, uh, that we're able to provide that for him. And we meet in the hall on occasion. And a couple weeks ago, we met in the hall and we were talking. And Victor is such a gentle, loving presence. And he talked in the most serious tone of how COVID has just been devastating to people. We have been traumatized in so many ways in the last few years. And I continue to learn what that means and its implications for ministry. And I don't have a handle on it, but I'm uh, willing to learn even as I recognize that I too uh, uh, come from that space. But acknowledging our different states of being that we're not okay. I don't know anybody who is just, you know, perfectly happy, well-adjusted, you know, hey, this is the time of my life, you know. Um, we're all, you know, trying to live into a new normal, but the normal keeps changing, and, and we're, we're not on the other side. So here we are gathered on, on a mountainside, and Jesus stands up to speak to a beleaguered crowd. That's what's going on in the Gospel of Matthew with the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes. I have preached a sermon on this. It's one of my, it's one of my, uh, uh, I don't want to say I haven't preached it, I only think that I've preached it twice, uh, it, but on, on this passage. So the beginning of this is something that I'm going, you, uh, I'm summarizing that other wonderful sermon that I love. In this passage, it's a bunch of beleaguered people gathered on a hill, the sick and those caring for them. And Jesus blesses them in all their weariness, with all their questions, with all their wondering what they did to deserve this, with all of their dreams for their lives buried deep. Blessed are you when you know that it is God who sustains you. To you whose walk with God is gritty and raw and bare. To those whose beds are baptized daily with tears. You are not cursed. You are not abandoned. In fact, you know to lean into the loving arms of God who will sustain you on the darkest of days. You are wise. You are pillars of faith. You are God's precious children. Should we just pause and cry? Wherever you find yourself spiritually emotion or emotionally, God meets you there with a blessing. Matthew tries to paint Jesus as the new Moses. Moses spoke from Mount Sinai, so here we have Jesus up on the mount speaking to the disciples with the crowd overhearing. And it's not, doesn't start out with a list of commandments, thou shalt and thou shalt not. Jesus starts with blessing. I read this week that 
Um, most of, of religions are concerned with blessing. Who's blessed, who's not? How do you get it? How do you inherit it? How do you keep it? And so on. What do, we need, what do I need to do to find favor with God so that I don't find myself on the side of the mountain longing for ease? Doesn't work that way. Our culture has wrongfully, we've abused the word blessing in our culture. You know, we, you know, when somebody is blessed financially or has some outward, you know, expression on social media, somebody, you know, on vacation, they're on vacation in Hawaii, hashtag blessed. Kids make it into an Ivy League, hashtag blessed. You get a shopping spree on the Champs-Élysées in Paris, hashtag blessed. We've abused the meaning of the word knowing that in our living and in our dying, we belong to God, hashtag blessed. The blessing is not an easy life or a life free from care. It is a life of relationship. In Matthew, we have a list of blessings, not commands, mind you, what to not, you know, not do this and you will be blessed. You are blessed. You are already blessed. The blessing comes in relationship, not by ad adhering to a list of rules, but innate to the relationship. We talked at Christmas how Joseph was considered a righteous man. He didn't follow the rules, but he was a righteous man. Abraham in scripture is called a righteous man before the rules even existed. Righteousness is the relationship, walking hand in hand with God. That's the blessing. That's the righteousness. Imagine life in the garden. I think our souls long for it. Our return to the garden. That's how it all began. That's how that was a life for which we were created. But like Adam and Eve, we lose ourselves. We lose ourselves in our priorities, what we think we need. Blessed are the people who get what they think they need and find out it's not what they thought. Millard Fuller, the, the, the man who created Habitat for Humanity, his story is that he wanted to be a millionaire by age 30. He made it, and then he realized it wasn't what he cracked, it was cracked up to be, and then he dedicated his life to helping others and found out that's a way more fulfilling life. I, I talk about the, the Disney princess culture that I was raised in, that we continue to raise our, our kids in. If you, find the, the, if you find the perfect person, then your life will be bliss. Show of hands. <laughs> you know, and the, the fallacy there is, you know, so, oh, you, you think you found the right person. Oh, but not really. And so you keep looking, and you can keep looking, and you can keep looking, and can, you can keep looking. You're never going to find fulfillment in that relationship. It's a relationship with God. Blessed are you when you get that thing that you need, think you need to be happy and only find out that it does not satisfy. Blessed are you when your soul finds its rest in God. But then let's, let's be honest. Jacob wrestled with God. Life and faith is a wrestling match. It's not all ease. The same man who wrote the 23rd Psalm also wrote a lot of lament psalms. On the side of the mountain were people having, some of them were having a good day, some were having an awful day, some were despairing, some were angry. And that same person the next day might wake up to the sound of birds and just be okay. That's life. And then... We'll make choices throughout the day that show who we are and whose we are. The blessing comes first and then the oughts and the shoulds. In Micah, the question is asked, what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. In Jesus' sermon, the humbly comes first. Walking with God leads to the doing justice, and the loving kindness. The, the, the sermon continues. With God's blessing, we seek to bless the world through working for justice, through loving acts and words of kindness. 
Humility acknowledges that we don't, that we can't do this life without God. Blessed are you when you know that you cannot do this life without God. Blessed are you when you experience the warmth of God's hand on a regular basis. Blessed are you who can sing God's praises when the, when the world wonders how you possibly can. How we live our lives, the oughts, the shoulds, are in res- again in response to God's outstretched hand. From the beginning, God has desired to live in relationship with us. Righteousness is choosing to do so. And it is because of that relationship that we can keep our heads up even when we are despairing of the news. And we continue to work for justice because we know that that is God's will and work for us to work, to sacrifice, to live in a land where no one is afraid of the people who were meant to protect us. We continue to to choose love and kindness because that is how we fight the ugly inside us and in the world. Blessed are you when you keep on keeping on, knowing that you walk with God. And whether you fall on your face or you soar with wings like eagles, you know yourself to be blessed because God has claimed you and you belong to God. In Jesus' name, amen.